She is an artist with a breathtaking vision and a global audience. Also a dedicated teacher, she has inspired and mentored many. While her mixed media art continues to push boundaries, entertain and inform, not only in Sri Lanka but across the world, ETV Power Women proudly presents Anoma Vijaywardhana. Hi, and welcome to a brand new episode of Season 2 of Power Women. Um, today we're very fortunate to have with us um, a renowned artist, Anoma Vijaywardhana. Hi Anoma, and welcome Hi, to the show. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming, because um, I want to just start off by asking you, did you always know that you wanted to be an artist? Was it something that you always knew, or did you accidentally kind of stumble across this talent that you have? I just wanted to paint from day one, yeah. so I always wanted to be an artist yeah but also I'm not that very good at anything else okay <laughs> <laughs> I think that was what I was always doing as a child yeah and giving everyone little paintings and painting on the walls etc but recently my mother told a friend of mine she never told me that yeah. even as a baby I would trace them you know the embroidery on baby's pillows yeah my little thing I would go oh, around really? tracing that so maybe I was always drawing you know yeah you and always had this yeah that's what I really wanted to be I did study design because my yeah. parents said you can't, you can't earn a living as an, as artist. an artist. That's not a profession. Right. So then I went to learn designing okay. because that was a more kind of an applied art as right. opposed to. But I always had this thing that one day, I'm going once to I'd done the designing, once I'd had some, you know, yeah. uh, financial security by doing that, I would paint okay. and paint full time. And I in your more recent sort of work, you've kind of explored these themes of fear and isolation and sort of where has that come from? I mean, is it something that you've... you've well, I, I suppose in a way, um, I'm, I'm very interested in sort of existential anxieties, perhaps yeah. because as a painter, one is alone and has to work alone anyway. Right. So yeah. one kind of comes to face with things. And I've also had things in my life which has made me look at these issues. Yeah. And um, probably that's why. But also, I think there's other work that I've done, which is exploring same. The exhibition I did in Sydney was uh, called Space, and it yeah. was exploring man's position on Earth, if you like, in terms of nature okay. and the interaction with nature. So it's also things that I'm really passionate interested about. in, yeah. passionate about. I yeah. have to, my paintings, I think, are very emotional. Yeah. It's something I'm sort of struggling with myself. I'm not really painting for anyone else. Yeah. I'm actually, it's an adventure and an exploration for okay. me. I'm trying to figure something out for myself yeah. uh, about an idea. Yeah. And maybe I don't find a, a, a conclusion, but it's my visual exploration of what's yeah. going on and worrying me in my mind or yeah. interesting me. You know. Which kind of leads me on to what I want to ask you next. And something that we talked about earlier was the process of creation. Mm -hmm. You know, as you said, you know, during when we were chatting yes. sort of off camera, yeah. <laughs> you know, you told me that it really is an absolute process. It's not something you just wake up and say, okay, fine, I'm, I'm just going to paint. No, even but with uh, any painting or indeed with um, a series of paintings, yeah. it, there's a gestation, germination, yeah. time, almost like, having a baby, I right. assume I haven't had a baby, but I, you know, <laughs> it, is like that birth, it, it, you know. it is like giving birth. So it is a long time where it's inside, yeah. you know, and nothing happening. And having read about books on creativity, etc., I've heard people say it's a little bit like fishing okay. as well, yeah. you know, that you're just sitting there waiting for the bite. Okay. So sometimes you're in that process. But um, it's, just, it's just something that you need to draw out right. or it's pushed out buy something you feel impassioned by yeah. and and then the process moves on to paper and sketches and I use the camera a lot I yeah. take a lot of photographs so a lot of it is just going on in my head long before it even gets to sketchbooks yeah. and then sketchbooks notes I do a lot of writing okay um, and I'm very interested in poetry and yeah. and uh, music and all that comes together in a very kind of I don't know hard to kind of even define kind of way yeah. to begin a painting but also I, I like change and I like I um, don't want to repeat myself I'm excited I About, want to explore yeah. this so it, it has to be through this process yeah. that I can't leap into a painting 
unless it's something I've kind of done before. So it mm. needs to be researched. It is actually a long, um, sometimes very arduous, tortured process as well. And there are moments of agony. Yeah. I mean, there are terrible moments of agony. It's almost purgatory when you can't think of an idea at all and you don't yeah. feel like painting, but that's what you're longing to do, but yeah. nothing, so it's you're, not, you're blocked. Yeah. And that is the worst thing. But then of course the final purpose of doing it and why we do it is yeah. because it's completely intoxicating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's the best high I know, yeah. you know. And um, that's the reward. I mean, yeah. the reward of art is neither fame or success, somebody wrote, it yeah. is intoxication. Because you're really putting your self out there, your heart and, it, and soul and out there for everyone to see. And why exhibitions are so horrible? It's yeah. like standing there naked. Yeah, I can imagine. It's just your complete self is out there for everyone mm. to, mm. Which, I, which I think is incredibly brave. I think artists are incredibly brave and incredibly evolved to be able to, to do that. I don't mm. know. I think we're just compulsive. That what, <laughs> yeah. That's what makes us feel good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and we, we need to do it because that's it's the just, best thing yeah. we can, you know, do. I'd rather be painting than doing do anything else. Anything but there else. are times that, you know, I don't feel like it or yeah. I can't or whatever. And those yeah. are the terrible sort of times where you sort Literally. of get sort of stuck. You know? Right. Well, on that note, we're just going to head in for a little break. Um, but for all of you at home, don't go anywhere because we're going to be right back with a lot more fascinating stuff from Anoma. Um, so we'll see you after this break. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh, we have with us Anoma Vijay Wardhana. Um, Anoma, I'm going to ask you actually about your life at Central St. Martins. I mean, it's one of the most prestigious um, schools for art and design in the world. And it must have just been an incredible experience. You would have met some fascinating mm. people. I must say, I, I never thought I'd get in. Yeah. I, I, it was my dream. Really? Oh, yeah. yes. It was even very long ago, it was difficult. Yeah. And I suppose that experience changed me and my life completely. Yeah. Because um, being in the middle of London in a, in a college like that yeah. really stretched you. And you met people who are all living on this sort of high edge of creativity, yeah. all slightly mad. And that was a great <laughs> relief because, you know, you thought, oh, well, I'm not the only one, <laughs> you know, and pushing the boat out yeah. and, and breaking boundaries the whole time. I mean, it was very much about not towing the line, but just yeah. breaking through into new things and new ideas. So it was both challenging and uh, exciting, but also we worked extremely hard. In my final yeah. year, I think I went in early morning when the cleaners went in okay. and left with the cleaners late yeah, at so night at 10, sort of 6 in the morning, 10 at 9, you know, yeah. in the winter. But we yeah. played hard as well. Yeah, know? I'm it sure. It was a great sort you of know. atmosphere of creativity and wildness and friendship. Yeah. You've kind of embraced technology and, you know, in your work, you know, you have video installations and, you know, you've kind of embraced all this, this new media, I suppose, mm, if, yes, if, new you, media if you like. Art. I mean, uh, my first love is always using my hands yeah. in a very tactile way and using paint. Yeah. But I'm also fascinated, and I always have uh, been by photography, yeah. and not per se, but to use as sort of an aid memoir for my for, yeah. work. But um, what actually set that off was actually seeing um, Jaffna uh, in 2000, and just after the ceasefire, right. 2002, and recording it, again, yeah. in terms of actually wanting to do paintings. Yeah. But then the images were so strong, I right. really wanted to use them. But I, yeah. I'm not a photographer, I'm not a straight photographer, and I always want to fiddle with, you know, yeah. even if I leave a painting for a long time, I, you know, I, sometimes it has to be framed, yeah. because yeah. otherwise I'm going to change it again, <laughs> you know, I actually do that sometimes, <laughs> take it off the frame you know, and fiddle with it. So really I liked working with so it started with, with digital, um, you know, fiddling yeah. around with Photoshop. I think whatever works, you know, yeah. so if it happens to be that sort of medium, that's fine. If yeah. it happens to be sand, we'll work with sand. Yeah. So whatever works to express the ideas that, that I want to yeah. express at that time is what I would look at. Tell us about your f the first time you exhibited, because, um, I mean, you have exhibited all across the world. I mean, well, you've had many, many... Exhibitions. What was the first one like? I mean, you know, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> such a long time ago, I think. 
But what's interesting is that when one's exhibiting in uh, different countries and with yeah. different people, with a different audience, not that one's ever working for the audience, you have to be very flexible right. and adaptable yeah. to how your gallerist wants to put the show together. And yeah. it just varies. Um, in the Maldives, I did a show which was, you know, ground was sand. Okay. And it was in a kind of wonderful marquee. Yeah. And so it was, hanging it was quite something, yeah. you know. In Sydney, we worked in a different way. It's yeah. a different balance. And um, Shatra said, well, I'm hanging the paintings. Do you mind going away? <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I had nothing to do with it. Because she said, I can't think while you're sort of panicking yeah. here oh, quietly. So just, uh, you know, when, when you see people buying your art, I mean, is that quite sort of, I mean, it must be A, very thrilling, but also it must be quite difficult to, because these, like you say, they're your babies almost, yeah, to they actually are, part yeah, with since them. Since I don't have any babies you know. and children, they are really my babies, yeah. and I love them to go to a good home, yeah. and especially a home that I know, because yeah. then I can go visit them. <laughs> <laughs> and, but also, though, as I said, I paint for myself, when someone chooses a painting, it's yeah. because they've had a relationship yeah. with it. It's because they've fallen for it. I mean, some yeah. people do buy for investment and other people do buy because for it, decoration, yeah. but mostly I think they, they yeah. speak the paintings. So it's as if they have come close to me, yeah. you know, and they've un the, the we get closer yeah. because they've understood something that I'm trying to say in the yeah. work. Right. Well, on that note, we're going to go into another little break, um, but we will be back with more from Alnoma on ETV, your lifestyle channel. So we'll see you after the break. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, Alnoma, we've talked about your professional life as an artist. I'd like to maybe sort of ask you a bit about your sort of family life. Mm -hmm. um, what were you like as a child? I mean, were you quite sort of a bit quite wild, wild? A bit impossible. <laughs> yeah, you had sort of a bit tempestuous and temperamental, okay. and maybe probably quite a problem for my parents. Oh, really? A bit of a handful, were you? Bit, bit, and my sister is very gentle and sweet, and okay. is perfect, really. <laughs> <laughs> so that made me even look even and worse. <laughs> So, um, I think I might have been a bit of a trial. It's just that um, I didn't, don't really like being told what to do and, yeah. and, and being disciplined by anybody else because I've yeah. always got my own ideas. And, you know, that's not so good if you're small. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes I'd just disappear and go and climb on the roof and, oh, and really? sit there okay. for, so that nobody could get to me. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like... Were there, I mean, did you come from a background of artists? Were there other members in your family that were also... Took towards uh, my father paints. I mean, yeah. he's a he was a sort of engineer, but he 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 used to paint very very good portraits as yeah. well, and he quite liked Cezanne's sort of work. Right, so okay. Landscapes were like yeah. that. So I got used to Same him painting yeah. when I was very young. I saw that happening. Yeah. Um, Harold Pierce is a is an uncle. Or right, okay. Or great, not an uncle, but a great uncle, or yeah. some relative wow, of my so, mother's. Yeah. So maybe that's the only other one I can think sort of think of as an uh, as an influence. My aunt took fo photographs. Okay. My mother's sister. Right. So maybe that also yeah, kind of kind influenced. Of, yeah. me. And then I think I also had some wonderful teachers here, especially mm. uh, Nalin Jasura who actually said to my parents, she should study design. Okay. And I was at an age when I didn't even know what design was, what yeah. is that, you know? Okay. And uh, so that's how it started. started. Yeah. I mean, you yourself teach now as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that sort of, I mean, that must be incredibly rewarding. And sort of, yes, know, it is. Of it's it's um, actually, I started teaching when I first moved out of London to Somerset when I got married and I yeah. thought, you know, I'm going to be cut off from London. And I, uh, have, yeah. I was in London all the time, no. but still. <laughs> Uh, and so I thought um, I ought to work in an art college and, you yeah. know, and that was a wonderful experience. And then I've always carried on teaching in some form yeah. since then because I love that interaction. Because, again, it's a very lonely job that I do. Yes. Yeah. It, it needs to be. Yeah. And then the interaction with other people who are creative, who are yeah. thinking creatively and to share ideas and arguments yeah. about art is, is as, wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. And also, I mean, you know, just kind of to see sort of this new talent and this emerging talent and you know like you said it just gives you different yeah and, and there's so much happening in Sri Lanka yeah. we're hugely brilliant at yeah. visual stuff I mean you know whatever level it's at it's a lot there's a lot happening yeah. 
even if it's just down the park, you know, yeah. it's exciting. It is exciting. It's exciting. I want to ask you actually, what was it like having lived in the UK for so long and then moving back to Sri Lanka? I mean, how did that impact your work? Well, it it was very difficult for me because it was also an emotional time. I moved back because, yeah. because my marriage was breaking up. Right. And, and uh, so it was a very tough time to yeah. come back and a, quite a tough age, in fact, to come back because yeah. I actually left Sri Lanka when I was 16 to go to school in India and yeah. then to art college. So, so really, I, I hadn't lived an adult yeah. life here. So it was a bit painful, a um, bit different. So in terms of my work, yeah. um, uh, when I was in England, I was doing a lot of designing. Right. And one of the reasons why um, I decided that I wanted to paint mm. here, well, coming back was also because I could paint here. Yeah. And I wouldn't be able to design on the level that I was designing there yeah. because, in a way, you need to be in London, Paris, yeah. or New York to, to be, have that. Yeah, yeah. And the work was going to those places. And it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. I, you know, my agent who does those places yeah. wouldn't have been able to take my work because yeah. I was too out of touch with yeah just what's happening you know you're working like two years ahead of the season yeah so um, it did change my work in that then I started to actually concentrate wholly on my painting yeah and um, it's, just it's been wonderful yeah, yeah. Well, on that sort of high note <laughs> we're gonna take another break um, but we, when we come back we've spoken to some of your friends and family and they've given us a bit of an insight into you um, I'm sure you know lovely words nothing to worry about <laughs> so uh, for all of you at home don't go anywhere, we're going to be right back with a confession cam after this short break. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Hi and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh, we're just coming into our confession cam, which is where we've, we sort of taped some of your friends and family. and. Yeah. They've kind of told us a few things about you, and I'm sure it's all good. Maybe a couple of things you don't want to hear, <laughs> or you don't want us to know. No, I'm kidding. It's all lovely. Um, so why don't we take a quick look at that now? It's just on the screen over there. To me, like, I consider her one of those brilliant people. And, uh, for example, I listen to every word that comes out of her mouth quite intently. Uh, because she's one of those people who are a perfectionist when it comes to her work. Uh, but also she's, to me, one of those very unique people in Sri Lanka, obviously, who, who is very deep. She always reflects on things before she says something, uh, takes her work very seriously. That's reflected in her art very much and it's such an individual expression. Obviously, as, as a, like I said, as a friend, obviously she always has time for you. Anuma, so uh, even though she's not a social person, like Anuma doesn't love to go out all the time uh, to every each and every cocktail. But if you are a really close friend of her and she wants to spend time with you, she has time for you. But I mean, with, with all of that, she's an absolute professional. And I remember this one particular time when I was going for her art classes. I was a few minutes late, and we were going on this trip, and she just left me and took off with the rest of the group. <laughs> I've been thinking about how I would describe Anoma and I think probably the best is to tell you how I met her. <clears throat> we were both living in London at the time and I met her at a cocktail party and we were talking and she mentioned something about a tribe called the Senai who do some very interesting work with dreams and it was a topic that interested me very much in terms of my professional work. So I said, oh dear darling and give me the reference. This was before you could just put a name on and Google it. In those days, references were gold dust. It would save you hours of trying to find things. And she said, certainly. And then I heard nothing about it. So I kind of dismissed this as usual socialite kind of stuff where, you know, people say yes, 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 and nothing happens. And then to my amazement, six months later, I get a photocopy of the article that gives me all the references with a note to say, sorry it took so long, but I got tied up with some emergency problems. And I think that really says everything about Anoma. It's something to do with a certain quality as a, as a human being. And to find somebody of her generation where you still have that old school respect for other people uh, is very nice. And I think that's the basis of our friendship. I see her work having a narrative quality. And no matter what the clouds are, at the core, there is a sense of access to a higher level and that higher level is through beauty. 
you can depend on an OMA. Um, that's not easy to find nowadays. So many friendships are based on what that person can get from you. Um, I've actually discussed this with an OMA that <laughs> I don't think there's anything she can get from me and I can get from her. Um, and yet there's a strong bond between us. She's like a sister of mine. Well, as a child, we, uh, my mother and all of us saw that she was very talented. And my mother always encouraged her, whether it was any kind of art, cultural thing, and art, music, and always encouraged her. And in fact, she says that my mother was the abiding influence in her life. And that was one thing. Then I remember her when she was young, uh, putting this music, and dancing all those, all jumping on these chairs and all that kind of thing. As a child, I can say, um, she had a lot of spirit and I was able to teach her to ride my horses, uh, also to drive a car. I taught her things like that. Her exhibition quest, which we had about, in about three, three years ago, I think, uh, that was a magnificent thing. Because there, she used her art to bring healing and reconciliation with art, music and words, quotations. Because this creative minority is the only thing that can change the future and the future of the whole world. On that beautiful sentiment, um, we're going to go in for another break. And when we come back, we have got the dreaded yeah. 10. <laughs> I'm going to subject you to those 10 questions. <laughs> But a lot more to look forward to after the short break, so we'll see you soon. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. We're at that sort of, you know, final bit of the show. <laughs> the dreaded 10, and poor Anoma looks like really <laughs> nervous, but like, I promise you they're not that bad, and I know you'll do brilliantly. So, um, Shall we start? Yeah? Okay. Question number one. Um, who's your worst enemy? I don't see anyone as an enemy. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. What would you say to your ex if you met him on the street today? Is there anything you'd like to say to him? No. no. Okay. I think I'd just like to pass him by. Okay. Actually. Great. Who, in your opinion, is the greatest artist who ever lived? That's a very difficult one. Maybe there are a couple of artists that have really informed my work. And yeah. one is Turner. Okay. And another is someone called Bill Viola, who's a video okay. artist. Okay. And so those. But that, I don't think that is the greatest yeah. anything. Would you open your home to a stranger? I have, you many have. times. What's the most outrageous thing that you've ever done? Gosh, I can't. I have, we have to pass on that or we have to read that. <laughs> so many. <laughs> Do you think you'd ever get married again? Would you like to be married no, again? No, I think once was, was quite enough. enough. I don't think it actually works for me yeah. anyway. You know, okay. I'm alone now. If your house is on fire, what would you take with you first? Definitely my sketchbooks, sketchbooks. because that's where all my ideas and my plans yeah. and my thoughts and that my personal life is. If a film was made of your life, who would you like to play you? No. <laughs> who? Me at what age? I mean, you know, <laughs> that's very difficult. Yeah. Are you moody in the way artists are sort of perceived to be? <laughs> really, you are. <laughs> terrible, and then it's terrible to live with because you know sometimes I feel ecstatic and I'm as high as a kite yeah. and I'm full of beans, and then sometimes I feel like so miserable and low. How do you respond to negative criticism? Yes, negative, very, very vital. What I don't like is the sort of nasty little bitchy side yeah. kind of shot which remark is not which is in any not way. just which is not nasty. even yes it, yeah. which is sort of nasty not really useful and unfortunately we've come to the end of the show um, but Anoma thank you so much for coming and for all of you watching at home have a wonderful Christmas and a new year uh, we'll be back again next week with a new guest but if you want to learn more about the show and you'd like to see past episodes and just get some general behind the scenes info, log on to www.etv.lk 
Uh, we've got a Power Woman section there. And you can also check us out on our Facebook page, so make sure you log on to that and send us messages. Um, and thank you again for watching, and we'll be back with another brand new episode of Season 2 next week, so we'll see you then.